Wow. Okay, so there's a lot that I could say about this movie. Um, I'll try and summarize it as best I can. I, you know, had heard mixed reviews about this when it came out, mostly negative. Um, but I decided to take a shot at watching the movie Noah to see what some of these problems might have been that people were talking about. So it didn't take long into the film to realize that they were taking more than just a little bit of liberties, which sometimes happens with historical events where maybe to add to the scenario, they might add a conversation that's not recorded, but it might have happened something like this. So they don't go with that route. They go to complete fantasy land, like they have Noah basically turning into a James Bond type guy where he takes on three people and kills them all. And then um, Methuselah has like a sword of fire that takes down an entire army of like 5,000 people on a single swipe. So obviously that was um, taking some massive liberties and adding to what the Bible had said. So I was already very much um, concerned whenever we reached that point. But then as the movie continued on further and further, I started to realize more and more the last thing that the filmmaker was concerned was presenting an account of the biblical record of what happened with Noah. So time and again, it would not just deviate a little bit from the biblical account, but it almost seemed like they went out of their way to make it as unbiblical as possible. So um, there's probably too many problems that I could give. And if I wanted to nitpick every single thing that they did wrong in this movie, biblically or otherwise, I could probably turn this into a two-hour critique of this movie. I was writing just complaint after complaint, and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to summarize some of these um, so that we're not here all day. But the biggest thing was that they continued to add to what God had said. Whether this is seen in these things called the Watchers, which were like these massive stone creatures that was said to be created on the second day, although God said that he created life on the sixth day. These things supposedly were created on the second day of creation. There are these massive um, pillar gargoyle type things that are um, basically sent to the earth for having disobeyed God or something along those lines. So then they help fight with Noah's enemies to keep them off of the ark, although the Bible tries to welcome people onto the ark and they resist it. In this movie, people are wanting to go onto the ark, and Noah and these watchers, and God as well, don't want them on the ark. They want them to die. Um, so with this, we see that they're trying to go against the Bible. And here's what's a problem with that. I mean, there's a lot of problems, but whenever you just think about movies, people, whenever they're making like comic book movies, they go out of their way to say, okay, well, what does it say in the comic books? We don't want to deviate too much from the comic books or for like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or whatever. If they start taking some liberties and start adding stuff to what wasn't in the source material, the fans lose their minds because they're like, hey, this is not what we signed up for. This is not what we had in mind. And so the filmmakers are usually pretty good about trying to keep it within the events of the literature where they were getting their, their stuff from. But in this, it seems like the filmmaker had it in his mind to just completely disregard what the Bible says, which to me, just in terms of a dollars and cents thing, is odd that you're going to basically alienate your target audience. I mean, it's been shown that um, Christians will go out and see Christian movies, even if they're not that well done because they want to support, you know, Christian film. And sometimes they just want to see a good, clean movie that doesn't have a bunch of filth on it. But in this case, he basically goes against what his target audience is looking for. And as a result, it was just a mess, not just financially, but also critically as well. So in the movie, there's a point where um, Noah gathers his family and he tells them that he has had a vision from God and he has been tasked with building an ark for this flood and it was to, quote unquote, um, save the innocent. So when you're hearing this, you're thinking maybe if you've been brought up in church at all, okay, so this is to save those that will call out to God, that will seek forgiveness of their sins and they will find refuge in God through this ark. 
nope, that's not what he was talking about here. The innocent, he goes on to explain, are the animals. So God has tasked Noah and his family with building the ark, and the animals are the innocent ones. And because Noah and his family are doing this deed, he'll let them live for a little bit longer. So there's this huge environmentalist kind of go green message in it. And in the process of giving this about protecting Mother Earth and all this stuff, it disregards the main point of the of the story of Noah is that human humankind, mankind, we were punished because of our sin. The world was a wicked, wicked place, and only Noah and his family were seen to be righteous in God's eyes, which is why he flooded the entire world. And so whenever you lose sight of the fact that uh, this is about sin and God's punishment for sin, and you just make it into an environmentalist message, then you're basically completely um, making up your own story. Besides all the other um, problems and um, wrong interpretations that they give throughout this movie, the fact that they miss on this main point is by itself, if everything else was right except that one point, that would be enough to never see this movie because it's a flat-out uh, lie in terms of what it's saying. So whenever we're looking at it, we see this environmentalist garbage, we see that it's not about sin, it's about helping Mother Earth and saying things like that. And ultimately, it's to make the planet a better place. Now, obviously, Christians should be concerned about making the planet a better place. But that is not our primary concern. Our primary concern is for ourselves to go to heaven and also to point as many people as possible to Jesus so that they would go to heaven. But this is not about salvation. It's not about God even in this movie. The only thing it's really about is uh, how to basically protect Mother Earth and about how Noah is basically a psycho um, sociopath throughout this movie. So uh, they don't want anybody to have kids. They don't want God apparently in this movie doesn't want to continue the human lineage. And so Instead of having Noah, his wife, his three sons, and his three sons' wives, which most you know school children know, instead it has Noah, his wife, and then he has his three sons, and then his uh, one of his sons has a wife, and then the other two don't have wives, and then Tubal Cain sneaks on the boat. Like, why just make up stuff and just add to the scriptures? So in the process of this, um, one of Noah's son's wives, which was not supposed to be able to get pregnant, got pregnant. And because apparently the, you know, humans were too bad and God wanted to destroy all humans, Noah was going to kill his daughter and his preborn grandson or granddaughter because he didn't think God wanted humans to reproduce. So there's this scene that lasted for what seemed like 20 minutes where Noah's trying to to get to his daughter-in-law to kill her preborn child. And I mean, it's just like you're making Noah, who was said to be the most righteous man on the earth at the time, and a man who walked with God and was right with God, you're making him into the villain of the story, into a really, really horrible person. And I don't know if this is just to continue to try and discredit the Bible and discredit Christianity or what the motives were behind this, but they make Noah into a supervillain, essentially. So I can't really recommend anything about this movie. Uh, you know, I guess there were parts where it was, I guess, um, decently well shot and some of the parts were decently acted, but it was such a drudgery to try and get through this film, I was constantly just like, what am I doing? So uh, I would not recommend this to anybody unless you want to see how um, the world will pollute and will try to go against what God has shown us in the word. They'll try and counter it with false accusations of things that are not true. And this is what the father of lies does is he'll take something good like God's word and he'll pollute it and change it to um try and fit, quote-unquote, the times. And God's Word doesn't need to be updated. It just needs to be shown for the truth that it is. And so, um, as Christians, you know, it's great to support Christian movies, but about the last movie I would want to support 
is a movie that's supposed to be Christian, but then it ends up having an unchristian message and goes against the Bible. So um, hopefully people will learn from this in Hollywood and they'll you know get the big budget movies like Noah was a big budget movie, but instead of just giving an accurate for uh, telling of the story of Noah, they they change it up. So hopefully in the future when they decide, Lord willing, to get a big budget Christian movie, they can do it right. Okay, so until next time, see you then.